What's up YouTube? I'm No More Op 4. Welcome to my channel where we talk about guns, gear, bushcraft, and hunting. This is part two of my DIY series on making your own heat reflective survival tarp shelter. You can see part one where we talked and showed how to create the actual tarp. In this video we're building the second most important piece which is the ridge line and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Now again this video is primarily about making the ridge line but there are some survival skills or just general bushcraft skills embedded within the video in regard to rope and cordage. Uh, we're going to show how to braid paracord and I'm also going to splice an eyelid into but it. Being able to braid or twist your own cordage is good in a wilderness slash survival scenario because you may not have paracord available for you. You may be forced to use natural cordage for something and you can strengthen any available cordage that you have significantly by learning the technique to twist or braid it. And so let's go ahead and let's get started. I'm going to show you what you need to do this project and I'm going to show you how to get it done. Okay, all you need to make a ridge line is your rope. I've got 100 feet of paracord here, a lighter, a knife, measuring tape, and I've got some weights here to hold down the rope as I'm tying it so I'm not getting any slippage. I'll show you how to use those in just a second. First thing we need to do is get our paracord. I'm going to measure it out. Again, this is 100 feet. And we're going to take three 25-foot sections. Again, we're going to braid this cordage. We're going to use a three-strand braid. And uh, I'm going to take 25 foot pieces. Probably lose a little bit during the twisting. I'll show you what it ends up being after we've got the full length twisted. We're going to take our three remaining strands and burn the ends so the inner strands you can see are already starting to stretch a little bit. That will stop them from stretching as we're doing the braid. You'll want to do this on both ends. This is seven strand. You can use other cordage. Paracord is just the type of cordage I keep in mass quantities. It's most useful to me. Uh, but for a, a shelter ridge line, we're perfectly fine with using paracord. That, that's not an issue. And we do need one length of string to hold on to the braid as we're tying it. So I am going to cut a small length. Don't really need too much here and don't like to waste paracord if I don't have to. And again, we're just going to tie little knot. Hold this in place. All right, now we're going to get started. We're going to do, we're going to take our three strands, keep them as even as possible. We've done a good job so far. And you're going to want to tie this off. I would say at least six inches or so because uh, where you're going to tie this knot anyway, um, because that is the piece that you're going to use to splice the eyelet back into the ridge line. So I'm pull that. Got about six inches there. That should give us sufficient uh, eyelet length. Go ahead and you can pull pieces tight there. That way you don't have any uh, unevenness in this knot. We'll untie this in a second once we've got a little bit of this braided. But essentially this will be the piece that splices back into the rope. So very simply, to do a three strand braid, all you do is right, left, right, left, right, left, and so on. Now we're going to get this a little bit further down and then I'll show you how to make the splice. Be sure that as you're twisting the strands, you take up all the slack to get the braid as tight as possible. So to make the splice, after you've got the length you want, I want about a four inch eyelet. So I braided about eight inches. When you fold it back on, your, on itself, it's gonna cut in half. So we untie the knot at the top and we're gonna fold the part we braided over top of itself. Way to test that you're doing it right is you've got the pieces lined up like that. Make sure you don't have a longer piece with a longer, another long piece or two short pieces together. That's how you know you've got the braids lined up. And then we simply repeat as we were doing before. So you've got those over top of each other. Right, left, 
right, left. Now this section is obviously going to be thicker because you've got double the strands. Keep going till you get to the end and I'll show you how to end the splice. Now I like to run the shorter strands pretty far down as I have here. You can cut them though once you've got a sufficient length of it spliced. This is good enough so we're going to cut them here. In order to do that all you've got to do have those up out of the way and continue braiding the longer strands down past the edge of the shorter ones. Once you're a sufficient distance down, a couple inches, all you need, you can pull those strands down and cut them. So the splice is done at this point. See the splice there? Again, it's about four inches, which is what I wanted. And I'll just use a weight to hold down the part already braided. Sit down, turn on some jams, and get back to work. Like I said, if you get twisted up in the back, all you've got to do is unthread one piece, pull one piece through, and you'll be back in business. Again, the best way to stop yourself from getting tied up in the back is to keep distance. So just take two fingers, run it between, and pull it down. If you do get tied up, just do like I, like I showed you. Take the one piece of the strand, pull it back out. When you get to the end, simply tie off a knot, cut the pieces, and we're going to show you how to whip the end here in just a second. We're using the piece that we used initially to make the eye splice, not to waste anything, and we'll use that to whip the final piece. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to whip the end. And instead of using the entire 550 cord, we're actually going to use just cut off the very end here of both. We're just going to use the sheathing, make it a little bit easier. You can see the individual strands of the 550 cord. This is Gorilla Paracord. This is probably my favorite uh, paracord. It's never let me down so far. Um, I like the color choices as well. They've got a pretty big selection. You can check it out. But okay, so we're going to take our sheath. We'll burn the ends just to close them off. And we're going to take this section, lay it parallel with the uh, ridge line like that, and take it and start wrapping it around, keeping this parallel with the rope. Want to get that first one as tight as possible. It'll be easier to take out the inner strands on the paracord. You'll get a better wrap with it that way. If you leave the inner strand in, because it's wider, you'll run out of uh, the sheathing faster or the rope length faster but because the inner strands have been taken out getting a little bit extra length out of it than we otherwise would still keeping those wraps tight now what we're gonna do probably about halfway up we're gonna take this piece fold it back on itself it's best to do it over where it was already coming out of the the wrap or the whip I guess I should say and whip that over top that underneath strand all right, getting near the end. Let me see if I can get... No, I'm not going to wrap it again. So we'll take that end piece, this piece here, and we'll thread that through the bite that we made, like that. And then we're going to pull tight on this piece. That's going to cinch the bite down along with the other strand of the whip. And then just go on both ends and give them good pulls. And there you go. That's a whipped end. So what you do now, 
both pretty tight. Just give them one last check. Tag them and bag them. Just cut those end pieces off and give those a good nice burn. So that's it for this video. Ridgeline ended up being about 18 and a half um, feet after, and that was starting with three 25 foot strands. So you can see how much you lose in the wrap, even when you've got it really tight. But look, again, very small package to go, to go along with the tarp for your tarp shelter. Stay tuned for the other parts of this project. I'm gonna show you how to set it up in the woods. We'll talk a little bit about that. And I'm also gonna show you some other small, inexpensive gear items that you can use to make your tarp shelter and really any type of shelter that you use, if that's a tent or otherwise, out in the woods. How to make those a little bit more efficient, a little bit more field expedient, good for cold weather when you've got gloves on. Uh, I can forego the use of certain types of knots and things like that, so stay tuned for that. That's it for me. I'm no more up for. As always, stay safe. I'm out. Please be sure to rate and comment on the video you just viewed. For more videos on guns, gear, bushcraft, and hunting, subscribe by clicking the channel icon. You can also see a link to my last video as well as to my other social media. Make sure to like No More Op For on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, and see detailed posts on my blog. Thanks for subscribing to No More Op For's YouTube channel.